The CZ Model 45, let's check it out. CZ has been around since the early 1920s, and during that time, they have produced a wide array of firearms. Uh, it's, an, it's amazing, honestly, how many guns that they have produced, different models, different styles. Of course, mainly known for their CZ-75, which really put them on the map as far as a premium handgun maker. But for years, they've been making all kind of different firearms. Uh, here we have the CZ-45, and it's in 25 ACP. This is definitely a mouse gun. What's really funny about this is it was a favorite with the German soldiers during World War II and was continued to be made in Russia after the war. 25 ACP has been considered a backup self-defense option for a long time. Now, of course, you know, we've gone to 380s that are about this same size. So it's kind of fallen out of favor, but yet, still can be effective, especially for a deep carry or, you know, just a backup. There's a lot of cool things about the CZ-45 that we're going to look at. I found this on GunBroker, uh, which I just get on there and find different mouse guns. Uh, and you can typically find all kinds of different things on there. But a uh, great little piece of history. And guys, honestly, a very reliable little small firearm. That's a lot of fun to take to the range. The CZ Model 45, designed in 1945, right after World War II. Uh, this came from the Model 36, uh, which had a frame safety, and the uh, 45 has that removed. We're going to go ahead and drop our eight round magazine. It does have the hill type safety, and then we'll check the chamber, and the gun is unloaded. The Model 45 was actually a simpler design than the 36. It cost less to manufacture, and so that was part of the reasoning behind this little Model 45. Uh, this also called the Visor 45, VZOR 45. Uh, it has a two and a half inch barrel. It is a blowback action. Uh, and these were actually redesigned in 1992, and they are currently in production, uh, but only in Europe because of the 1968 Gun Control Act. Uh, that limited the size to where if you got too small, there were certain parameters that didn't allow for certain firearms to be sent uh, in, or imported into the U.S. We still have these CZ-45s, but the 92 is in check. They're still being made today. Actually, they have more of a modernized grip to it. I mean, there are some other features. And then there is a, a mag release behind the trigger guard on the 92s. So more of an updated 25 ACP pistol, which makes it really funny. Uh, these are hammer fired. You can see the hammer at the back. Now, one of the things about this pistol, and when you pull the trigger, you can see the hammer coming back. I'm not gonna dry fire this pistol because the firing pins are somewhat brittle. And while you can get parts for the CZ-45, the firing pins are very difficult to get, and when you do find them, they're fairly expensive. But this is actually not considered a semi-automatic. It's considered a self-loading repeater. And it has a lot to do with the internal action in here that actually actuates the hammer. But for general purposes, it's still a semi-automatic pistol. Very similar in design to the Baby Browning. Now it does have a magazine disconnect, so if you remove the magazine, uh, you're not, you have no action with the trigger. Now I'm not a big fan of that typically, but maybe with this one because of the brittle firing pin, I think that might be a good thing. Also, it has these really unusual groove sights. There's no real sight on here. It's just this groove. Uh, and guys, I'll just tell you, as far as getting some really good accuracy, it's fairly difficult to do. 
but this is a point and shoot up close and personal self-defense firearm and again guys it's still being used today uh, one of the things about the 45 was the factory was confiscated by the russians and so there's a number of different things uh, the one thing about these small little cz pistols is that there were so many different models made czech has always been a prolific firearms manufacturer now this actually came about the same time in fact maybe even a little bit later to the z model uh, this is actually also called the duo and the duo is a little bit different but this is the z uh, and these were actually produced in the 50s honestly to me uh, the 45 looks more modern, looks like a later model, than this small little Duo, or the Model Z. Uh, it does have a small little latch right here that keeps your uh, slide in the rear position. And this is this one isn't in the best condition, but uh, it was just the one that I happened to pick up. It has the hill type release, and it's unloaded as well. Uh, but again, these also had issues with brittle firing pins. And I actually had a problem with this one and then bought a firing pin to replace it. But back in the 90s, Protec came out with their model of the CZ45. Uh, same kind of design, same hill style magazine release, and the gun is empty. Uh, also hammer fired, and this was, in fact, we did a review on this a few years ago. It comes in a number of different colors, and these were made in the U.S. Uh, but that's the only way they could get these in. In fact, the owner of Protec is the one that started Keltec. And so once this company went out of business, uh, he started Keltec. It has a long history behind this. But you can see, I mean, the lines are really close. There's a little bit of some differences, but overall the action and everything about these two pistols are pretty much the same. But there's something about the 45 that just seems to have a lot more soul to it. It's not made from alloy frames or anything. I mean, it is just solid steel, and yet it's still a very concealable light firearm, especially during its time. Now, the trigger pull is fairly heavy, but honestly not too bad for just a double action only pistol. And again, we're not going to check the trigger pull because we just don't want to take a chance with the firing pin. We appreciate Fioki for sponsoring the ammunition, all made right here in the USA. And guys, I used to buy Fiocchi for some of the odd calibers years ago because they produced a lot of stuff you just, the big guys just don't make. And so it's really nice to have these little bit obscure calibers, even though 25 is fairly popular. And one thing that I found is that it is good, clean, burning, um, accurate. We've had no problems out of Fiocchi. Now taking the CZ Model 45 down to the range, it's in 25 ACP. It's just really soft to shoot. Uh, but one thing that I really was concerned about was reliability. I mean, even if this was a reliable firearm when it was produced, uh, this pistol is pretty old. And so, you know, taking it out to the range sometimes, you don't know what to expect. We had no malfunctions. We, we just didn't. I mean, it just ran. Uh, it's a very light spring and it's able to take care of that 25 ACP ammunition, which is really low powered. Uh, it fits really nice in your hand. Uh, the double action trigger pull every time, I mean, you can feel that trigger coming back and you know it doesn't allow for a lot of speed, but this is really uh, very safe considering you don't have any kind of external safety. Uh, very pointable, it's small, and your finger hangs off the bottom. Uh, you know, if you have really large hands, you're only going to be able to get about two fingers on this grip. Uh, but I was able to get it with my pinky hanging off, and honestly, shooting 25 ACP, it's so smooth, it's so soft, there's so little recoil. You know, it doesn't even matter. So uh, main thing is, is trying to find where to put your hands, because there's not a lot of room on this firearm, because it's so small. But that was the purpose. It's made to be super small, easy to conceal, uh, and definitely one of those that, you know, for deep cover, you could carry. But obviously, you know, it's a fairly old firearm, but yet it runs, and it's a CZ. Now, when it came to accuracy, these sights, and I had a little bit of a glare on the top, so I didn't realize it, but I was holding the barrel up, trying to see the trough of the, you know, the sight right here. And so I was shooting really high. What's really funny is I decided to shoot it rapid. I just put a magazine in, shot it rapid, and it was right in the bullseye area. And so it's a very natural pointing firearm. And if you're really trying to get accuracy, because there's no sights, you know, you're going to have a little difficulty. 
But man, if you need to pull it out and fire it quick, it seems to get right on target. Well, I deleted my target video accidentally. We're not gonna be able to see the accuracy, but I can just tell you, it was at the top of the circle that I usually shoot at. And then when I shot it rapidly, it went straight into the center. So you just have to take my word for it, I guess. <laughs> Now for disassembly, pretty old school. We're gonna drop our magazine, check to make sure the gun's unloaded. Uh, now we wanna bring back the slide about a half inch like this, and you're gonna look for that notch where you can turn the barrel. Once you get it turned where you can see this little uh, raised area, then you can just pull the slide right off. Now out fell our recoil spring and guide rod. It actually fits down in this hole right here, and so we'll do that when we get ready to reassemble. And then your barrel, turn it, and then bring it out, and then typically it'll fall out. There it goes. And so you have this little groove, and it actually fits right here into the frame. And so it gives it a lot of stability. But inside the slide, you'll notice that there is a groove that's in the slide. And you need to make sure that you are showing this little groove when you put it back together, and then you turn it, and it goes into the frame. I mean, this gun hasn't been very well kept, but uh, and, and still we haven't cleaned it. But you can see the old style. Uh, this is a striker fire pistol. And then we have the all steel frame. We have the hammer back here. And again, it is only double action, uh, but a very simple design. Now for reassembly, we're gonna take our slide, put our barrel back in. Again, making sure that we remember where that little slot is. And you're gonna wanna turn it to where you can see that little uh, raised area. Take your recoil spring and guide rod, slip it down into the frame, and you wanna have the spring part exposed. Now we're gonna put it onto the slide rails. And sometimes guiding that recoil spring in is a little tricky. There we go. Now as we bring back our slide, get it into that little notch position and turn it and then let go. And we're back in business. Put in your magazine. And again, guys, don't dry fire it. So with the CZ Model 45, uh, you know, it's one of those pistols that was designed, you know, back in the middle part of the last century, and yet still being made today, still having copies that have been made over the past few years. Uh, and so it just is really one of those guns that's almost timeless. Uh, and of course, obviously, they've done some upgrades to this, but the design itself is still pretty solid. And that is, to me, one of the true tests of time where a firearm design can carry itself into the modern world. Now, here in the U.S., you know, we're not typically carrying 25 ACPs, and this is not something that most people look at for self-defense. But it does make a nice little backup. It's small. Even though this is all steel, it's going to have a little heft to it. It's still a very small pistol. Uh, really, the only downside that I see with this handgun is its brittle firing pin but I would definitely have an extra firing pin available if I really like to shoot this. And guys, if you ever get a CZ-92, it's gonna be the upgraded version. Uh, here in the US, we're just not gonna get them, but it's just great to see that this design has carried over for over 70 years. So guys, again, just part of the mouse gun world. There's a whole ton of different firearms out there. Unfortunately, with the 1968 Gun Control Act, it limits us to a lot of these firearms that are still being currently made today. Now, with the CZ-92, it'd be great to get a hold of one, but those are now banned from coming into the country and have been, obviously, for a number of years. But this is just part of history. There's a lot of soul behind it. There's a lot of stories behind these small little firearms. And so that's what I really love about it. Am I gonna carry a 25 ACP in my pocket? Yeah, I'm gonna carry a Beretta Jetfire. But again, these are little fun guns and that's part of it, guys. It's not all about just self-defense. Most of us have a number of different guns that we just like to take to the range. And this is definitely in that category. Plus, it's so cute. Guys, check out Sportsman's Guide for all kind of accessories, shooting, hunting, camping, military surplus from all over the world. Uh, it's one of my go-to sources. And you get $20 off for every $100 or more purchase using SOCH, S-O-O-T-C-H, in the coupon code. And if you're a member of their buyer's club, you get free shipping. And that really comes in handy when you're ordering jerry cans. <laughs> so check out Sportsman's Guide. Great resource. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.
CZ is. And you're. God, you gotta be kidding me. But I would definitely have an extra firing pin if I had one of the. So, guys, again, just part of the mouse gun. Okay, guys, again, just part of the mouse gun. Well, I want to thank Fioki for sponsoring. This is 32. I can't use 32 in a 25. It's just funny when you say CZ45, you don't think about 25 ACP. 